The Elector Fortissimo 100 audio power amplifier has great specifications that will please people looking for high quality sound. The amp comes as a kit and here is how you assemble it. Assembling the Fortissimo 100 must be done in a certain order to obtain good and durable results. In this video we will show the steps in the order that we think is easiest. There may be other ways, so if you want to take another route, uh, feel free to do so. Before building the amplifier, uh, you may want to think carefully about how to fix it inside an enclosure. Drilling holes in the heatsink is easier to do before than after having mounted everything on it. All the parts required to assemble the amplifier are included in the kit, but not the tools. Also, thermal paste or grease is not included. Make sure you have some before continuing. To get the most out of the Elector Fortissimo 100, the differential input stages should be built with matched transistors. The kit contains 9 BC546B NPN transistors and 7 BC556PNP transistors, so you have a few to select the matched pairs from. Build these simple circuits on a breadboard or, as I did, on a prototyping board, as it is more reliable. The 3.3 kilo ohm resistors must be matched. The two transistors being compared must be placed close together and clamped firmly against each other with a laundry pin or a crocodile clip. Switch on the power supply and place a little box over the circuit to block airflow. Wait a few minutes and write down the measured voltage. Proceed in an orderly manner or you will lose track. Invert the power supply and repeat this procedure for the PNP pair. For the second differential stages you must use slightly different circuits with different power supplies. Repeat the previous procedure for both NPN and PNP pairs. When all the transistors have been compared this way you can select the best match for each differential pair and keep them together. Coil L1 of the protection board must be made by you. It consists of 13 tight turns of 1.5mm copper wire on a 10mm diameter drill bit. The wire for it is included in the kit. The coil's leads should be long enough to allow it to be positioned over R76. 10mm or more should be fine. Use a small knife to scratch off the enamel coating on the ends of the leads. Now we will prepare the large heatsink, as the rest of the amplifier will be mounted on it. First, lay the board on the heatsink and attach it with adhesive tape. The bottom edge of the board, where C1 is located, should be 1mm away from the edge of the heatsink, with the board centered horizontally. Mark the six holes close to the board's edges with a 3.5mm drill bit that you turn manually counterclockwise while applying some pressure. This is to avoid damaging the circuit board. Do not mark the holes K3 and K4, nor the holes of heatsinks HS1 and HS2. If you are a very skilled marker and driller working in a well equipped tool shed, you can drill the holes with a 3.2mm drill bit. If you are like me, use a 3.5mm drill bit instead. It will give you some slack when mounting the PCB. Mount the 6 10mm standoffs with screws. If the board fits easily over the 6 threaded studs, everything is ok. If it doesn't, you can adjust the position of the standoffs by making the holes a bit larger. Bend the leads of the power transistors T70 to T22 tightly perpendicular toward the transistor's front sides. To avoid applying too much force to the packages of the large power transistors when bending the leads, clamp the leads close to the package in a vise together with a 2mm drill bit. With a suitable piece of sheet metal, you can then bend all the leads toward the front side of the transistor. The pins of smaller transistors T17 and T18 can be bent with pliers. Bend them 1mm away from where they become broader toward the package side. Stick the transistors on the circuit board and place the board on the 6 studs. Slide the ceramic pads between the transistors and the heatsink. 
Adjust the transistors until they are all nicely in place. Mark the positions of the transistor holes with a 3mm drill bit, turn manually and counterclockwise. Again, if you are confident, drill 3.2mm diameter holes. If not, use a 3.5mm drill. Now do a test assembly with the transistor stuck in the PCB and loosely fixed to the heat sink with the ceramic pads in between. Adjust any hole positions if needed. When you are satisfied, carefully remove the PCB as it is needed in the next step. After these preparations, it is time to assemble the circuit boards. As usual, the mounting order is based on component height. Note that connector K2 is mounted at the end, so put it aside. Start with the small resistors and diodes. Then fit the power resistors except R50, R51, R54 and R55. Mount the socket for IC3. Next come the smaller capacitors sorted by size. Also mount the two solder terminal pins or turrets on the amplifier input. Note that C34 is a non-polarized NP electrolytic capacitor with a double footprint on the PCB. Use the one that fits best. Next, assemble the protection circuit board by fitting transistors T23 to T27. The two blade terminals K8 and K9, secured with M3 by 8 screws and nuts with washers, coil L1 and finally relay RE1. I suggest mounting LED5 too as it is practical when testing the amplifier. You can move it to the front of the amplifier enclosure later when everything is finished and working. Getting back to the amplifier board, now it is time to fit T5 to T8 and LED1 to LED4. The visible chips in the LED should be at half the package height of the adjacent transistors. Bend the transistors and LEDs against each other after soldering, or even better, while soldering, to achieve a good thermal coupling. The matched transistor pairs can now be fitted on the board. When soldering them, make sure the flat sides are touching over the full surface for good thermal coupling. You can use a small clamp to keep them together while soldering them. If you use shrink tube for clamping, make sure to remove it afterwards as it degrades the cooling capacity of the transistors. Next, fit IC1 and IC2, connector K1, power resistors R50, R51, R54 and R55, and then the electrolytic capacitor C15 and C16, and finally the tall capacitor C20 to C27. Make sure to respect the polarity of the electrolytic capacitors. Mount the two standoffs K3 and K4 that connect the output of the amplifier to the protection board. The next step is mounting the transistors T13 to T16 on the two small heat sinks. To reduce mechanical stress from temperature variations, bend the transistor leads. The bends must be close enough to the package to allow the heat sinks to be soldered on the board. Mount two identical transistors on the same heat sink with a bit of thermal paste, a screw with a washer and a nut. The screw head must be on the side of T13 or T15 for accessibility reasons. Do not tighten the nuts too much, as you will need some freedom when inserting the assemblies in the board. Make sure that you put the right transistors in the right place. First solder the heat sinks, then tighten the transistors, and finally solder the transistors. The next step is to attach the assembled amplifier board to the transistors on the large heatsink. Do this with patience. Make sure the ceramic pads are in place. For T17 and T18, fit the small insulating bushes on the screws to ensure precise positioning. Now solder at least the two outer leads of each transistor to the top side of the board. Solder more if you can. Take care when doing this to avoid burning nearby capacitors with the soldering iron. Unscrew everything and carefully lift the board from the heatsink without bending any transistor leads. Turn the board over and solder the transistor leads on the rear. The two-way screw terminal K2 that you put aside should be mounted now. Next, apply a very thin coat of thermal paste to the rear of the power transistors and to one side of each ceramic pad. Place the board carefully on the standoffs. Slide the ceramic pads under the transistors while making sure that the side with the thermal paste is on the heatsink. 
One after the other, fix the transistors loosely and adjust the ceramic pads. Use washers for the big transistors and the two insulating bushes for T17 and T18. When everything is in place, you can tighten the nuts. Use a 2.5mm hex key for the big transistors. Screw the four remaining standoffs on the studs on the power transistor side. They will support the protection board. However, before installing the protection board, you may first want to connect suitable wires to K1 and K2, as they are a bit difficult to access once the protection board is in place. These wires are not included in the kit. Place the protection board and for now only fix K6 and K7 with nuts. Connect the wires from K2 to K5. Insert IC3 into its socket. After a final inspection you may begin with testing. Connect the Fortissimo to a symmetric 40 volts power supply. This must be plus minus 40 volts. With a lower supply voltage not only will the amplifier not work as well as expected, but the relay on the protection board may not switch on either. Before the first power on, it is highly recommended to insert power resistors in series with the power supplies. 100 watt incandescent light bulbs can be used for this. When they start to glow, something is wrong. If that happens, check that you mounted the right transistors in the right places and make sure the polarity of the electrolytic capacitors is correct. When everything is correct, the four red LEDs should glow, not shine, and the relay should switch on after about one second. The green LED on the protection board comes on slowly just before the relay switches on. I measured 300 milliamps on both 40 volt supplies with the amplifier input shorted to ground. Don't forget to tighten all the screws and nuts before building the amplifier in an enclosure. Congratulations! You can now begin testing the amplifier. Enjoy!